on debut. Kemner doing his very best to emulate that here, but he's struggling. He is going to get to the one kilometer to go mark, but they're gaining now and they are gaining quickly, Sean. Yes, well, they are gaining, but somebody needs to up the pace a little bit here. And that final kilometer does ease off a bit percentage wise as well. But I think Kevna have you know, given so much, he's going to have difficulty holding on here all the way to the line. Arnold Demar dropped out the back, and Kevna is going to be caught. Kevna is going to be caught, and it's time to go because Formaloy is at the front. Formaloy is attacking. Ulisi is following him. He's got to be one of the favourites today. From the pool and company are dropping out the back. I'm not sure he can hack the pace. Give my lose his positions as well now. Molimus falling in about 6th or 7th position. This is all over the road, this. Formula's there. Formula has 600 metres to go. Ewan. And look who's hanging on. Look who's hanging on. Caleb Ewan. Caleb Ewan is still there. It's a monstrous performance from the Australian who's looking to take the pink jersey. He has Carapaz on his wheel. The sprinter and the GC man. 500 metres to go now as Ewan catches up. Ewan is there moving along. Look at that, number 43 alongside him is Peo Bilbao. He's a fast finisher, but he's not as fast as Caleb Ewan. Binyam Gamaya's made his way back. Bora still thinking of having a go. 400 metres to go, for the pool right in the centre. Also appears when you expect him the most. Magnus caught on the wheel of Caleb Ewan, who's really going for it. Caleb Ewan sitting there. Caleb Ewan going to have a go himself. Can he have it left to launch that final sprint? Gamaya's coming round the outside. It's glorious chaos at the Giro d'Italia. The sprint is launched, Gilmaier on the right, Ewan on the left, caught through the centre, there goes a match of Von der Poel as well, Von der Poel comes around, Von der Poel is there, he hits the front, there's a crash and Ewan's out, it's Mathieu Von der Poel in pink, Von der Poel on debut, takes pink, stage win in Visegrad is his, it was chaotic, and Caleb Ewan after surviving, gritting his teeth, digging the deep he's ever dug ends up on the ground with 15 to 20 meters to go how on earth did that happen and what happened there Sean it was chaos well it was chaos you could see there you know they were very much grouped together they weren't lined out as much and yeah, nobody was really able to set that real fast pace so you know all fighting just to stay in a good position waiting. We did see Hellebune there. He was in a real good position, but, you know, started to suffer in that final 40, 50 metres. And I think, you know, when you hang on, you go so deep there, you're just riding the wheels so close and a little bit of movement from the rider in front of your touch wheels, but he's OK. He's back up on his bike. I was concerned that we had a situation, you know, remember last year in the Tour de France, he's back on his bike and uh, hopefully there's no just road rash, no other major injury. Oh, what a horrible sight at the end of a beautifully explosive finale that was almost impossible to read right until the last 20 metres. Von der Poel looked like he'd gone out of it. Guillermoy had drifted. They both came back in the end where it was Ewan that we were suddenly surprised to spot in Grand Tour winning company. It's Mathieu von der Poel who takes the stage ahead of Biniam Guillermoy. It's von der Poel who'll be pretty in pink at the end of the day, but it was much more of a complicated story than that simple sum up suggests. Yes, well, it was a, a very messy, as we call it, uh, finish there. And, uh, you know, riders just uh, trying to keep a good position, but still trying to stay in the wheel of other riders. And when, you know, you're grouped like that together, and with the finish here as well, a little bit of a turn into the finish areas, we can see here, you know, the, uh, the, the, the fight. And from the pool, we can see the kick he has. He came from, you know, three bike lengths uh, further back, but uh, had that power in the end, and looked like he was out of all the way. And as we can see here, Ewan, he just touches the wheel, riding so close, and, uh, yeah, touch the wheel, and down he go, and it was, yeah, no no real movement from uh, Germain in front. He just uh, rubs the wheel, and down you go. It's Mathieu von der Poel, Biniam Germay, and Peyo Bilbao, the first three across the line, on stage one of this crazy start to the Giro d'Italia. <laughs> Well, he came, he's taken the jersey. Mathieu von der Poel did not disappoint. He had to work mightily hard for it, though. Biniam Germay, as we thought, was up there. Magnus Court's looking good, isn't he, after his injury? Peo Bilbao wasn't far, I'm just looking further back in the shot. As well as Carapaz, there was Mollema. 
And there was a crash further down. Of course, given everything that's happened, Sean, we haven't had a chance to focus on anybody who might have been caught out behind as well. Riders all along the road. We know that uh, Ballerini went down, didn't we? But we're going to have to wait to see if there are any more gaps, whatever happened. This is the top ten, however. Mathieu von der Poel wins stage one on debut at the 105th Giro d'Italia. He takes the first Maglia Rosa of the race in Visegrad, ahead of Biniam Guillemai on Grand Tour debut, Payo Bilbao, Magnus Court, Wilco Kelderman, Carapaz, Molema, Ulissi, Vendrame and Skielmosa are all up there, but look, time splits already. Bonus seconds, 10, 6 and 4 at the top. Biniam Gamay on debut was mightily, mightily close. At one stage he looked to be surviving better than Van der Poel. But it was a long climb, there's a lot of yo-yoing about. And there's the reaction from the Atomache crew. And there's a proof, he is going to go into the white jersey, so he will take something. Great start to Grand Tour life from him. Great start to Giro d'Italia life for uh, Mathieu Fodderpool. Already going bomb better than his dad, who didn't win a stage on his appearance at the Giro. A quick question. Well, quick, so again, one question. coming from a training camp, we talk about so, during the stage. Me and Eric Jerome, go away. Just come back in okay. excellent shape. And then we go to podium for white jersey. Podium. I just wondering if we were going to hear from Biniam Gamay. That sounds like our reporter is ready to ask a question. You won. The question just been you. He hit me somewhere. Yeah. Hit me somewhere. There you go. There is where he hit you. He was fighting by this stage really hard. You've got to feel really real feel for Caleb Ewan. Now then, I gather that we can hear from Biniam Gamay. Here he is. Spring, such an intense final. How was it for you? It didn't work for the win, but you were very close. Yeah, I mean, it was super hard finish. Yeah, I, I try all my best. I think I never do like this sprint. I think a bit longer. I started almost 250, 300, so I am in the limit. But Van der Poel is, I think, stronger than me today. But I'm really happy. Uh, someone touched your will uh, before the sprint. What happened exactly? I don't know. I just uh, uh, lead in my sprint. I don't know. I feel somebody hit me behind. I think so, but I, I didn't see. Okay, you didn't win, but are you satisfied with your amazing performance? Yeah, I'm really happy to say thank you. Well, he'll take the white jersey. Let's try and make some sense of this final kilometer because Arnold Demar is dropped. That's the first image we see. We saw Leonard Kemner on the attack. He'd been racing brilliantly. Kelderman was following in. This is the moment that Formolo tries to bring up Ulisi. Chimolai is not far away. Bilbao is there. And the minute I think that you and I both look at each other and think, wow, Caleb Ewan's still here. Yes, well, he was uh, you know, really in a good position here. Not. Not too much at the front because if you're in the second wheel uh, of the guy who's uh, for the guy who's leading, then you cannot see what's happening. If you're a little bit further back, you know, fourth position, fifth position is, the, is a real good place to be. And we see Van der Poel there. He's a bit further back, maybe in seventh, eighth position, ninth position. And you know, if you've got the legs, you just wait and see what's happening out in front, and then you make your move. And we can see here Van der Poel as we you know get ever close, close to the line. He's just following, watching what's happening and you know he just uh, had it got it in the end and if you've got the legs and you know from the feeling and Guillermo we did hear from you know he did a perfect job but somebody just that bit stronger and better than him in the final run to the line the Carapaz and Narbaez duo was looking good as well wasn't it I'm looking behind to see who else is there really if there are any splits as well when we're commentating we look at the front don't they but I think there are a few quite a few splits behind this is Ewan going down, unfortunately. And there's, well, there were four seconds there. There's maybe a gap here. And now there's a gap. So anybody caught out here, that looks like Sivakov. So he's lost a few seconds today. A couple of riders from Bike Exchange are there. Nox. Gavidi up behind. This is the finish again. 
It's one of those days where we're going to be looking in the next couple of hours for every single place in the results. There's the touch of wheels. So hard on you. And let's see if Bradley Wiggins can make some sense of what happened for us. En zo hebben we een Nederlandse roze truidrager weer nadat Tom Dumoulin de Giro won in 2017. Mathieu van der Poel, de eerste roze truidrager in pink. What an incredible sprint we have yeah. seen, Brad. Amazing. And it was just 100 meters to go, 150 meters to go. We thought van der Poel was out of it. Yeah, we, we couldn't see him. Um, we saw Caleb there and those guys. It looked like Mathieu had, had just been distanced from that wheel and wasn't going to get back and make it. But that last 100 meters, the burst of speed he had came over the top. Caleb went down, looked like he had a crash. Yeah. But Machu getting on the line, and they were all pretty much exhausted at that point. He didn't have time to throw his arms in the air, but um, what a finish. We said it'd be fast, but we said that man would win, didn't we? Wow, uh, and it was fast, yeah. was it? Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, uh, it, it was a race which was, let's call it a bit boring, right? Uh, two yeah. riders all day long, and mm. then it all comes down to that final kilometer. Yeah, I mean, if it was boring, but then the finish made up for it. Wow, what rewarding. And um, it just shows you, though, that cycling is like that, really. We have, you know, does it need to be long, long stages like that to get the same finish? Yeah. But uh, what a finish and um, fantastic to watch and be uh, witness to Machu van der Poel's first Maria Rosa. Oh, man, that, yeah. that will be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Machu told us this morning it would be a dream winning this one after he won the yellow. <laughs> Mathieu in the Maglia Rosa. He is an absolute superstar, isn't he?